Blockchain technology is disruptive, and it has arrived here in Switzerland in the center of innovations and private banking. So who are the winners in applying this new technology? And how secured is this new ecosystem of transactions? Arnaud, your project is in a fintech bank. It's sort of a bank based on blockchain. What is the difference of the blockchain bank from a traditional bank that we know here in Switzerland? Thank you. Thank you for your question. Yeah, so what we do at Montpellier is um, not a crypto bank. It's a bank on blockchain. The project is to create a Swiss bank based on three fundamental pillars, full reserve, marketplace, and tokenized. So let me explain quickly. Full reserve, it means that this bank will never ever use your money to make profit. It will never gamble your money on the market. It will never loan out your deposit to someone else. Like a tr traditional bank now. Like the traditional commercial banks, yeah. So um, we will, of course, refuse the privilege to expand the size of the balance sheet using your deposits, etc. So if we refuse to ourselves this privilege to do on balance sheet credit, how do we make money? And that's the second point, marketplaces. So the way we intend to offer product, banking product and services to customers is through the form of marketplaces. So if you look at it, it's very much the same way as Airbnb or Uber. We connect liquidity providers with consumers. And because it's an open marketplace, pretty much anyone can become a market maker on those marketplaces. So it means that basically we connect uh, uh, different needs all together and without the bank being the sole counterparty for the customer. And now the biggest ambition that we have in this bank is the tokenization aspect, because what we want is to bring the entire bank balance sheet on chain. So what does that mean? It means that we are going to, to bring, of course, the liability side of the balance sheet, so that people's deposit, euro, dollar, Swiss franc, on chain in the form of tokens, so that people can transact on a new network uh, that settles quite fast. Uh, and where the bank will be the custodian for this money. Now, on the asset side, and it's quite interesting because uh, what you have to understand is that most banking assets, 99% of banking assets are contracts. Okay. And what we do is to bring those, sm those contracts into the form of smart contracts. So what's the point, you would tell me? Let's take the example of loan. A loan is a contractual agreement that you have between you and your bank. Let's say you have a loan with UBS. Now, this is an asset for UBS because it yields for them. Every month you pay them back. Yeah, um, interest. But mm -hmm. it's an asset that is illiquid for them. Because if they want to sell it to Credit Suisse, you are still going to pay back to them, right? Correct. Now, if you have a smart contract instead, you are going to pay back an address instead of an IBAN. And what happened is that the ownership is managed by the smart contract itself. So it can be UBS on day one, Credit Suisse on day two, you don't care, you're still paying back the same smart contract. To this blockchain? To this smart contract, yes, it's an address. Yeah, instead of an IBAN, it's an address. And now what it means is that because it's represented by tokens, it creates an instant secondary market for this asset. Yeah, so, for, so you have contracted a loan and now, um, let's say Credit Suisse can even sell it to the crowd. And now the crowd can own pieces of a, of a banking asset that they were never able to own before. And also, it's liquid. That means that on the second day, you have a, uh, a secondary market for people to trade and exchange those pieces of assets uh, 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 so that they can have a yield for two months and mm -hmm. then cash out and invest in, someone, in something else in the future. So who can be participants in this, in this chain? Uh, well, it's open. It's all inclusive. So the, the, the idea of blockchain is that the only thing you need is a wallet. So you download the wallet and you generate a key, which is basically your password access to, uh, to the network that secure your access. And now you have a wallet where you can receive and send tokens, crypt uh, cryptocurrencies, etc., etc. All right. So um, speaking about blockchain, is it a block of chains, chain of blocks? What is, uh, is it exactly, uh, given a maybe a simple example as uh, we were speaking and how it originated in the first place? Yeah. So blockchain is a new technology that was invented back in 2008 uh, with the creation of Bitcoin. It is the underlying technology for Bitcoin. And what it did is to solve one simple problem which is to avoid double spending on the internet. And now Bitcoin was born from the idea that we can create money um, without the need of a central body to enforce the trust. Yeah? So the record uh, of all those transactions is stored in a global ledger that is shared among all participants and that is fully transparent. Uh, anyone can read it. 
And uh, of course, it is immutable. It means that we cannot change the history. And all this set of rules is enforced by the network itself and not by a central actor that you have to trust uh, to keep this record in a proper way. Mm -hmm. So there is a certain trust involved, right? It is all about trust. <laughs> yes. OK. So all the transactions, I understand, on the blockchain are chopped into small smart contracts, right? Uh, into tokens. Is token equal to a cryptocurrency or it's a misconception? It all started with cryptocurrencies and okay. cryptocurrencies mm -hmm. are basically, uh, let's call it the native currency of the, the, the underlying blockchain. And it, what it does, it, does, it creates an incentive for this economy to exist and for the people that secure the network to get a reward. And that's the cryptocurrency. And now with Ethereum, for example, um, we have a new use case, which is the smart contract. And the smart contract lives on top of Ethereum network. And what it does is it, it allows you to create tokens. So what we people use those tokens for today, what we've seen up to now, is mostly the use of, uh, for example, creating your own currency for your own ecosystem. Uh, let's say I'm a, I'm a startup, I'm a project, and I'm, um, I want to deliver some future services or product to the crowd. Now I can sell them tokens that will be used to buy those products in the future. And you're creating a token economy like this so that people, in order to consume those products, will need to buy the token first. So that work was work mostly uh, utility tokens. But now we see um, progression and we see that we can enforce new rules on the blockchain with, through the use of smart contracts and bring as well um, securities, assets, and pretty much any traditional banking or financial assets yeah. onto the blockchain and therefore having a transferability that uh, is... Other uh, than the, the um, cryptocurrency, right? Exactly, the, exactly. The it lives on top of uh, this, this so network. They, they could be all different... Uh, uh, currencies involved? Uh, it could be anything. At the end, uh, the main difference would be uh, the, the counterparty that you have. When you own a Bitcoin, there is no counterparty for this Bitcoin. You own it, right? When you own a token, there is someone issuing it that is really the counterparty. Yeah, so it's always a question of trust here. Yes. So the question again is uh, how secured is this new highway of transactions? It's, I would say it's as secured as people use it. Uh, if you look at it today, the Bitcoin blockchain is probably having the most secure ledger in the world. Not probably, it is the most secure ledger in the world. Now, the amount of computing power that people are sharing in this network is enormous. It's way bigger than the biggest supercomputer in this world. So that is not the issue per se. So what is the real issue? It is how to secure your access to your fund on the right. blockchain. Because again, blockchain has no central body that you can complain to. If you happen to lose your key, you lose access to your money. And there is no one that can give you something to recover it because there is no central body to call. So what is this key? <laughs> a key is pretty much like a, you, can, you can draw the parallel with a password. You have your own password, you put it on the, let's say, a post-it, you leave it on the computer, okay. someone has access to it, he takes the post-it and now he has access to your money. Oh, okay. And that's exactly the so same. keep your key safe. Exactly, same as cash. You don't leave your wallet on the table, right? So <laughs> right. you always yeah. keep your wallet in your pocket and you pay attention to it. Thank you, Arnaud. Thank you very much, Elena. Thank you for watching this interview with Arnaud Salamon from Mont Pelerin in partnership with Ducoscopy TV. And stay tuned to our next episode of Inside Tomorrow with Elena.